We saw an approach to innovation and change in the 10-step cycle that we looked at earlier. But the 10-step cycle is missing something. It starts with identifying students' needs. Who decides that students' needs need to be looked at? Who decides to step into that 10-step cycle? There's a starting point that isn't in the 10-step cycle itself. There has to be an innovator who decides to change something. An innovator is the one who says, let's start to try to look at students' needs more carefully. Now that you're joining us as innovators in language teaching, Volker and I have put together four pieces of advice for you. I'm going to talk about each one of these. The first is to recognize the size of the challenge. Second, you need to keep the balance. Third, cultivate collaborators. And fourth, develop your own language and technology skills. As an innovator in this field, it's really important for you to recognize the challenge that you're up against. It is a real challenge to play the role of innovator and to integrate technology into the curriculum because it is difficult to make changes in education. Education and other such institutions are just difficult to change. They are established in part to keep themselves going. Change is slow and difficult. In this context, it's really important to take a long view of the challenge and to not give up. Change doesn't happen overnight. So you cannot give up when one thing you're trying to do doesn't work. You have to take the long view. You have to recognize the challenge and don't give up. In other words, you have to stay optimistic. Some people think that Americans are naturally optimistic, and I don't know, maybe that's true. I tend to be optimistic, but I think you're optimistic too. You, in spite of all the things you're doing in your life, decided to take a course on language learning and technology. And so, I think that you probably have that spark of optimism that can keep you going through the long process of making changes in your educational situation.